I've got this hose here and I thought I'd post a video today about cutting a hose to size. So basically I'm going to be cutting this regular 5 8 inch garden hose, sticking it right in, let me get up close, the wind's going, I'm going to stick it right in the garden bed and start the soaker hose exactly where it's needed so that, uh, so that we don't waste water. To start the video off right, I'll show you the setup. I've got my irrigation system is coming out uh, under the ground through this 5 8 inch, at least I think it's a 5 8 inch, 5 8 inch um, uh, black irrigation drip tubing. I have a little uh, converter, I don't know what you would call it, basically the tubing slips into this little uh, Gardena um, converter to a garden hose thread. Then I've got a small garden hose thread coming up here to a Y. One section of the Y is going to go off to my regular beds over here. The other section of the Y is going to come over here and come up and snake around. It's going to start in this side bed. This is outside of this structure. So it's going to have its own little system um, that we can turn on and off with that valve right there. I don't know how many feet exactly this is, but it's unlikely that I'll be able to find a perfectly sized hose at the store. And I've got this existing hose uh, that I've had. It's a damaged hose, so somewhere over on that end there's a hole in it. Uh, so instead of throwing it away, I'm reusing it. So I've got it snaked out here, and I'm going to go ahead, and it's going to end up laying down right about there. So I'm going to cut it just a pinch long right there. I'm just going to cut it with some big scissors. You could use a knife or a saw or whatever you want. I've got huge scissors that I'm going to use. All right. I paused the video to make that cut because I only have two arms and not three. So what was that? About right there. I made my cut with these crazy big scissors. And now... This is going to end up laying down flat right there, and that's where that's where the soaker hose will start. So let me grab the pieces that we need. So here's the soaker hose that I'm going to be using. This is a 25-foot hose. It's underneath my lawnmowers there, but I'm going to bring it over there. My bed, which you can't see, is uh, about 20 feet. Well, it's about 10 feet one way. Uh, and I'm going to sneak it around one way and then back. So I'm going to need 20 feet of this hose. So I'll probably end up having a little bit extra or I'll end up cutting it to size later. You'll also note that on this garden hose, I don't have... I'm sorry, it's not a garden hose. On this soaker hose, this is a half inch inside diameter and it does not come with a flow reducer. Uh, a shorter soaker hose system like this really shouldn't be running at more than 10 psi so i'm going to have to install a flow uh, regulator onto the end this female side is going to have to snake on to or not snake on it's going to have to connect to the um to the garden hose that i cut uh just a few seconds ago which means this is the female end the cut the side of the garden hose that I cut is going to need a male end. So probably if you go to a regular old Home Depot or a Walmart or any specialty store, or if you jump on get that fly, get off there, fly. Or if you head off to uh, uh, you know your local Amazon, you'll be able to find something like this. It's a hose repair. This is the male end so i'm going to put this onto the garden hose that i just cut and then where is it right there it's going to screw on right there so let's repair it all right so here's my end i took the packaging off basically what you get when you buy one of these things is this little collar right here and then this part, as I drop it, this part right here slides into the hose on the inside. 
and then the collar will cinch down on it uh, to cause the, I don't know, to seal it. So what we gotta do first, is we gotta loosen the collar with just a screwdriver. Now I've done this a few times before. I've not done it like hundreds of times, but we're talking, this is not complicated. If I gave this to my nine-year-old son and said figure it out, I'm sure he could probably figure it out on his own given enough time. So you see, that loosens it up a little bit. That might be all we need, but I'm gonna loosen it just a little bit more. So, there's that. I'm gonna take my hose that I cut, make sure this is in the shot here. I'm gonna slide that on the hose. And then I'm gonna take this thing, and this is hard, because it's supposed to be tight. So uh, forgive me as I struggle on camera. You gotta jam that in there. I've seen some people heat this up to make it easier to stretch and basically just be more pliable. Uh, here it's it's a little after 4th of July, today July 6th, so it's a nice warm day. So this hose is already warm to begin with. Um, if you were to stick the tip of the hose in like boiling water uh, for a little bit, it would definitely, or almost boiling water, it would definitely be even easier to squeeze your nozzle into. probably fast forward through this part as I struggle to get that in. You see basically I've got part of it in, the rest of it is not there. It's basically just hard to get it in. Make sure of course you have the right size. This is a 5 8 inch hose. This uh, I bought from my local Fred Meyer. The packaging says it fits 5 8 or 3 quarter inch hoses. This would probably be better used if I had just used a 5 8 inch only one. It might not be quite so tight. Anyway, fast forward here until I got it done. All right, I've struggled for a while. This is basically as far on as I'm gonna get it. As you can see, this is bulging. This hose is bulging around it. This is very tight all on its own. So it's gonna be all right. Um, I'm gonna still slide this collar up and look at this the collar still barely slides over the edge so i'm going to slide it all the way to the end and just for good measure we'll tighten it up and get it as tight as as i can do i'm not going to pull out like power tools to do this it's probably overkill but as you tighten this up all you're doing is you're just I mean, you've got this thing is bulging the hose out, creating a watertight seal, and then this collar squeezes the hose even, even more so that it is unlikely and almost impossible to slide off. I'm going to tighten that up until it's just hard to turn it again. All right, now I got these tightened up. This is like hardcore. This is gonna be good for years to come. Uh, but I should note that they make these things in plastic. They are a lot cheaper when you buy them in plastic. Um, the actual mail-in connector uh, might be a little bit thinner material if you wanna save some cash. Um, but the high-end thing, I still bought locally for less than 10 bucks. I think it was like $8. So uh, it's still much cheaper than just buying a brand new hose. Mm -hmm. Now, having done that, I've got a new mail-in connector on a hose um, that was either repaired or in this case, trimmed. And now I can go and take my, my um, what is this called, a soaker hose, uh, the female end of the soaker hose, and just 
connect it. Now, you'll notice that I didn't put the, um, oh, what's it called? The uh, flow reducer on this because I'm going to go put it on over there. Oh, right there, wherever it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that on later. I'm actually waiting for that one to come in the mail. Um, I bought that one on Amazon. So that's going to be in in a couple days, the flow reducer. But so I'm not going to have, I'm not going to be able to use this soaker hose in the garden bed until the flow reducer, restrictor, regulator, whatever you want to call it is installed. Otherwise, I'm just going to blow out the hose because my pressure is significantly higher than 10 PSI. Anyway, I'll, I guess I'll probably post some videos on, um, on that in the coming weeks. So make sure you subscribe. But that basically shows you how to do 